I like to get dressed to go to the grocery store. I don't mind the looks. Who cares? Hello, hello. It's Brooke DeVard, and you're listening to the Naked Beauty Podcast. Today, I am joined in studio with Telsha Anderson Boone. She has an incredible resume. I'm just going to read a little bit about her bio so you guys really understand where she's coming from. Style architect and entrepreneur Telsha Anderson Boone is the dynamic force behind an expanding fashion empire that continues to reimagine the connection between fashion brands and consumers. In fact, she just launched an incredible collaboration with Vans that I'm desperate to get my hands on. As the founder and owner of TA, a concept store and e-commerce site for the global fashion-forward shopper, Anderson Boone has curated a highly sought-after product offering, closing the gap between contemporary designers and the untapped markets of consumers looking to discover and invest in elevated and unique products from around the world. The brands featured at TA have been personally sourced by Anderson Boone from Tbilisi, London, Paris, Peru, Milan, South Korea, LA, New York. Traveling around the world, shopping is like my dream. We have to talk about that. In 2023, Anderson Boone began designing. She worked with Farfetch, BOF, Diesel, American Express, to name a few. Anderson Boone has been featured in Vogue, Ebony, Essence, The Cut, Harper's Bazaar, The Zoe Report, and so many other publications. And now with Naked Beauty, she also has an adorable baby boy who is just four months old. So I'm super excited to have Telsha on Naked Beauty, and I can't wait for you guys to get to know her. I love that we're both in our mom era, and we're both in our LA era. I know. This is so crazy, but it's good. When did you officially move? Six months ago. And how are you finding it? It's different. It's an adjustment. <laughs> it's an adjustment, but it's good. I think LA gives me different pockets that yes. I enjoy, that I get to explore in my life. And New York still does hold a dear place in my heart. And I go back once a month, so yeah. I get a little of both. A bi-coastal babe, I guess. Yeah. Style in Los Angeles is... <laughs> the, the eye roll that she just <laughs> unleashed. It's really, I mean, it's people do not dress up. No, they don't. To go anywhere, to they, do anything. To do anything. I like to get dressed to go to the grocery store. I right. want to give a moment at Whole Foods. Right. And no one else wants to do that. So. No. It is what it is, though. I don't mind the looks. So who cares? And then I feel like when people do have a big event, then they'll do like a head to toe look. It's like a very like it's like been pulled. It's a, it's a whole thing. Like they put a lot of effort into just one moment for one night. And I feel like New Yorkers are when you do live in New York, whatever, you get to like have different moments all around, which is really fun. So yeah. I appreciate being able to be dressed all the time. Right. But I get that not everyone here likes to do that. And that's fine. I love that we are able to see each other at these beauty events. I last saw you at a Glossier event. <gasps> I got so excited when I saw your face. Oh, well, I was very much like, you know that <laughs> meme that's like, things black people say and it's like who all gonna be there exactly. that was very much me <laughs> it's funny before you walked through the door I was literally texting my husband and I was like no one's here I think it's time for me to go <laughs> he's like just give it five minutes I'm like oh god and then he walked in and I was like thank god but it was a really cute event it and was. you know building community is something that you've been able to do with TA your mm -hmm. store in New York yeah. that was in meatpacking you held this fabulous event that was celebrating Epilogic and I think some designers that were in yeah. the store. How do you approach creating events in your space that feel like community? That's a great question. I think for me, it's about creating events where I want to go to and where I feel like I could be seen in those spaces, which often you can walk into New York City moments like that, but they are kind of rare, especially for being a black woman. And I just, I also love intimate events. I love events where it's kind of the same people, but you have one or two new faces. And so I tried to incorporate, or I tried to incorporate that in the store back in New York City and hope to incorporate that in what I do next. And I think also too, it's just being able to give brands a platform to showcase who they are and what their product may be and also to give the people that are experiencing those brands also a platform to you know create content or interact with the product yeah. or just to come have a drink you made it look so easy mavi also enjoyed the event that was a great event for him the best guest i've ever had in the store let me tell you i'm sure <laughs> shepherd is going to be on the circuit soon i know i'm excited he his first event he was three weeks old and he went to a prada event 
event here in Los Angeles. Yeah. And everyone was like, did you bring a three-year-old here? I'm like, listen, mom needs to get out the house. Absolutely. And we need to start him young. So, yes, he's here. Absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah, you just had a bar and a DJ, and it was just very low-key. Yeah. I feel like people have stores and they have spaces, but they get all this anxiety about, like, how can I plan the perfect thing? And it's mm -hmm. just like you create a vibe. And Yeah, I think the perfect thing comes with the people that you invite. Like, I think the people that you invite and the people that come to join you and interact with your space, they create the vibe. Right. They're the moment. I'm just here to open my doors and give you a glass of wine. That's the easiest thing to do. And then, yeah, find a great DJ. Easy peasy. And the rest is the rest is easy. The rest is easy. Now, you are definitely a fashion girl. And mm -hmm. I want to hear about when you first started loving fashion. But you're also a beauty girl as well. Have you yes. always loved beauty? Yes, I've always loved beauty. I've always loved watching my mom get ready mm -hmm. and a part of her get dressed also is her beauty not only her beauty but her skincare so it's like a five to four hour process and when I was little it was amazing watching her get ready even like the prep she would do days before like going to get your nails done or your hair done like knowing that you have something coming up and getting ready for that in advance was always great to see and to be a part of so yeah I guess I'm both which is which is new but nice tell me more about your mom Oh, Tashima Yolanda Anderson. <laughs> She's the best human in the world. My mother actually is a therapist. So oh, interesting. Yes. What is that like growing up as the daughter of a therapist? <laughs> it's good. I get to be like her case studies. She never tells me about her clients, which is so annoying. I try to get her to break, you know, some rules, but she'll never do it. But my mom, I mean, she's just a force. She's beautiful inside and out. She's extremely intelligent and she knows she looks good. She just exudes a level of confidence that I always aspire to get to and I think I'm still working towards and not only that she's just a great mom and a great friend mm -hmm. and a great host like for her home and she also can like clean a kitchen like no other so my mom can too like, I, I, I will never have her cleaning <laughs> never I'll never do it but she's the best the only kind of dramatic depiction I've seen of a therapist as a mom dynamic is on sex education. Do you watch sex education? Of course I do. Okay, we love sex education. Love so it. when you were going through something at school or with friends, mm -hmm. would your mom kind of therapize you? Would she say like, how does this make you feel? And No, I think okay. because I'm already just talkative. So I would always get to the how I feel immediately. <laughs> Probably with my siblings, she had to do that a bit more. But I think what was nice about it is she just was really great at listening from jump. So mm -hmm. she would kind of let me walk through my emotions, let me walk through my thought process, let me walk through what made me upset or what made me happy. And then just give me good advice. I think now that I'm older, she'll be like, okay, do you want the sister girl advice? Do you want the therapist advice? And so I get to pick and choose. But yeah, when I was younger, it was always just mom. That was my mom. And she just so also happened to be a therapist and the advice was always on point. I even think she might have like had some of my friends as clients and just didn't tell me, but wow. who knows? <laughs> Where did you grow up? New Jersey. I okay. lived there since I was 10. I'm originally from Akron, Ohio. I was born in the same hospital as LeBron James and Steph Curry. Very cool. So that's like my claim to fame. <laughs> but New Jersey since I was 10. And then right after college, I moved to New York and I was there for like seven years. And now I'm in L.A. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the love of fashion, when did that start? Mm, again, my mom, LOL. When I was probably... 10 years old for Christmas. We were living in Paramus, New Jersey in like the cutest condo. And I walked downstairs and I saw like a coach box. This is big box. And they had like a red bow. And I was like, oh my God, like, that's probably not for me. It's probably for my mom, but this is so cool. And then I left the box till the end. And my dad was like, you have one more. And I'm like, one more what? And he's like, one more gift. And so I opened it and it was this coach vest with a matching bucket hat. It was iconic. And I don't think I took it off until it got really hot in July. But I wore it from the moment I got it until I was almost going to faint. But it was a beautiful moment. And I think from there, I realized how much not only did I like fashion, but how it made me feel and how it was, you know, it could add a, a confidence booster and it was fun and it was colorful. And I got to express myself without talking. <laughs> and I got to express myself through clothes without having to speak. So it was great. That coach moment was iconic and that's yeah. when I love fashion. I found some great pieces at your store and you oh, have thanks. some gore. I mean, I think the Christopher John Rogers pieces always jump out. They're so colorful. They're bright. The silhouettes are incredible. The price tag is high as well. As it is high. 
But it's worth it. But it's worth it. And it's also, you know, my idea of what like a timeless piece is or a classic piece is or even like a basic piece has mm-hmm. changed so much because I've realized like you can have something that's bright with prints. Like, yeah. And that can be a basic. And it could be a basic. And it could last you for years. Right. I think if you like invest in good things and you buy good things, you have them for a long time. And that's what I love about building not only my closet, but also the store and helping other people invest into their closets, into their wardrobe. Because you'll have it should you take care of it for a very long time. For a it, long time. And I love it. It's my favorite part about about brands. So I'm going to bring up something slightly controversial around fast fashion. Oh, God. Okay. (laughs) Because, and I only say it's controversial because I want to be careful that I'm not, I don't seem like a snob when I say this. Yes, yeah. But I used to buy a lot of fast fashion. Your Zara's, your, and I stopped Completely. Entire, completely. Cold turkey. Okay. I mean, if, I, if I'm if i like in a pinch, and I, but I, I really can't remember. Now, I, I have begun again because children's clothes are inherently non-sustainable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Zara kids will have really cute <laughs> stuff. The cutest little gap. It's the cutest thing. But then I also will find children's clothing brands that are really high quality mm-hmm. and made from organic materials. And mm-hmm. I can feel the difference of those too. Yeah, it's there. And... I had a moment with myself where I said, this is, I'm not going to build my wardrobe with these fast fashion pieces. Mm -hmm. Do you incorporate fast fashion into your wardrobe or have you kind of moved away from it? I've moved away from it. I will say that my favorite sweater is from Zara. I've also had it for seven years. Okay. So I take care of my things. I feel like Zara's quality used to be better. It used to be so, so much good. better. So right. much better than it is now. So that sweater, I will always have it. I wear it every winter when I'm in New York. It is amazing. I will never give it up. My husband's like, are you going to throw this away? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm like, I'll take the tag out of it before I throw it away. But other than that, I try not to. I really do like investing in pieces. I think that there are ways to dive into luxury without always having to spend the top of the line price and that's through outlets, sales. Oh like, my God. I mean, the real real is like my is, homepage is basically. The best. I'm obsessed with the real real. There are just so many wonderful like resale sites that are kind of popping up now and trying to figure out ways to kind of bring luxury back in a way that's maybe not as high of a price. So I try to go those routes before I get to the fast fashion route, but it's not for me. But I have seen some women and men put together looks head to toe in full Zara and have killed it. And oh, I'm like, sure. where did you get this from? And sure. I'm like, oh, Zara. I'm like, right. is it still there? I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm not going to go buy it. But is it still right. there? I want it. And it's there. So it's been done before. I mean, style is so much about how you put it together, right? Mm-hmm. A look becomes a look on the person in the way that they put their own kind of twist on it. 100%. And you mentioned your husband, Justin, who's extremely fashionable. Thanks. He's the... As well. He's the best. Dating him, when we first started dating, now marrying him, my wardrobe has changed tremendously. How so? I take far more risks. I wear tighter clothes, which was not a thing for a while. I used to love a good, like, baggy moment. I wear his clothes, which is also amazing, so I inherited, like, an entire wardrobe. He's got just incredible it's pieces. It's amazing. And now he, like, only wears his brand, Dave and Glive, so I get to wear all the clothes he's not wearing. It's like these Loewe pants, these like vintage tees he's not wearing. They're all mine. They're all in my closet. It's amazing. (laughs) When you were dating, like I I feel like I never dated a man that was really super fashionable. So I didn't have to put a lot of thought into like what I would wear to a date. Like I was just like, okay, a black dress and heel. Like they'll they'll be impressed. Yeah, I'll look hot. (laughs) But if you're dating a guy that really has like a keen aesthetic Mm -hmm. and like. Mm -hmm. It's hard. So, like, talk to me about the early days of you all dating and, like, how you got dressed for those dates. <laughs> I would let him get dressed first, and then I would try to match Oh, like, before fly. you even lived together, you before would— Before we even lived together, I would be like, hey, like, come on over, and then I'll get ready, and then I would say, or FaceTime me, and then I would see what he was wearing, and then I kind of was like, I'm just going to be who I am. He's going to love it regardless, or he's not. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and I was able to really put together— you know, what I felt most confident in. And I saw how many risks he was taking. And I was like, oh, like, maybe if I tried to do that. And so I just started doing it. And then we got to a point in our dating marriage. Well, really when we were engaged, when he already put a ring on it, he was like, do you mind if I ever, like, want to say something about your outfit? I'm like, oh, God. Like, (laughs) what is it that you need to say? Like, I look great all the time. And he just was like, just let me know. And then the next day, he was like, I want to do those pants with that top. And I'm like, oh, my God. But I love that. He was right. So here we are. (laughs) 
I love that. A husband that can also give style advice. It's nice. It's annoying, especially when you like you know you look good. You come out and you're ready to go. Yeah. And he's like, those shoes? And I'm like, these shoes. And then we'll have kind of like a debate. <laughs> and then I'll run back in the house and change my shoes because he made me self-conscious about it. But it's nice. It is nice. It's fun. We have a lot to talk about. We will watch like runway shows for hours at home. Instead of watching TV, seeing him dress my son and me dress him is really fun, too. We get to bond over that. So it's nice. We have a lot to talk about. <laughs> How is it working with your husband? It's good. It's hard. Like, we just collaborated on this Vans project, which was nice. But, of course, it's a lot of biting your tongue. It's right. also a lot of finding a middle, compromising. It's a lot of listening, which, I mean, is marriage in general. So it's just amplified because more is at stake for how do me you, personally. How do you create boundaries between, like, I would imagine there are times when you're at home, relaxing, mm. having a glass of wine, and, like, something work-related comes up. All the time. I'm like, honey, not right now. Okay. And he'll even do it to me. He'll be like, not right now. <laughs> as long as we, it's funny because we have a rule. As long as you say it with love, we're good. Like, if you curse me out, we're going to have a problem, which he would right. never do, but maybe I would. But normally it's like, I can't right now. You know what we say? I don't have the capacity to talk about this right now. I love that. I'm and gonna... then he'll be like, okay, I'll circle back. And I'm like, okay. okay. Thank you. I don't have the capacity to talk about this right now. I'm going to be borrowing that. Please do. It's really nice because when you say it, it's kind of like, oh, okay. When he says it to me, I'm like, okay, well, too bad. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> but we find a middle. It's nice. It's, That's a, so it's always nice. a compromise. What was it like for you having all of these body changes being pregnant? Were you ready? Were you prepared? Oh Did you God. know what was going to happen? I would die to talk about this. Everyone lied to me. Because <laughs> you're also quite so young. Mad. Yeah. You're 20. You're 30? I'm 30. You're 30. Okay. So you were 29. I turned 30 like seven days after I gave birth. Okay. So I was 29. Right. I was in my body prime. Right. I was going like, to say that's like prime. <laughs> like the boobs were lifted. The butt was plump. I was so excited for my body at 29. And it took me a really long time to get to that. Right. I used to be really, really tiny. I mean, probably the size I am right now after giving birth, which isn't necessarily an issue. I understand that. But for me, it was... I was teeny, and then I finally got the curves I always dreamed of, mm -hmm. and I was into it. <laughs> and then I got pregnant, and I didn't really show at all until maybe like six months. So that also, that gulf, I feel like there's this very awkward time period where you don't yet have like a bump. Like we all yes. know how to style a bump. Like yes. Rihanna has showed us. She like, showed. But there's that awkward, like you're four months pregnant and yeah. you just look like you've had a big meal or you're basically, bloated. Basically. And so I would tell people also, they, oh, Tosh, do you want a drink? I can't, I'm pregnant. Like yeah. not right now. No, you're not. So it was yeah. also a lot of that. Right. And then I remember just, and I woke up and I just had like a bump and then I woke up again <laughs> and I was like, not even myself. And I'm like, cool, what's <laughs> happening? It was fun to see my body change. I was not mentally prepared for it. So it was very difficult, mm -hmm. especially when I got towards the end and I saw parts of me stretch that I didn't even know were there, <laughs> let alone that they could stretch. What surprised you in the body changes? The, so the swelling was insane. Okay. Where my, were you swelling? My feet, my mm -hmm. face. So I gained weight first, like in my face, like my face, my feet, my like hips had like a swell, my hands, none of my rings fit it just was like everything that I finally got used to that I worked towards just wasn't happening yeah and I it was definitely awkward I cried a lot <laughs> I was like I can't believe this I doused myself in cocoa butter yes for the for the stretch marks and everything yes and then after I gave birth my belly was like 12 times chocolate than I'm used to but that was the only part of me so it's also like that because I do love wearing a good crop Mm. So it was just learning. Yeah, the 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 color changes in your yeah. skin are so interesting. Crazy. I'm yeah. like, how did I not? No one told me this. I'm like, <laughs> why is everyone gatekeeping this? Like, <laughs> I don't understand. Gatekeep something else. Like, tell the truth about what is going on. But it was hard. It was beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But did I like being pregnant. Nah, like it was cool. But am I like, yeah, I want to be pregnant every five years? Right. Some Absolutely. people love it. Some people feel like they're like in their most beautiful, divine, feminine, goddess era pregnant. No. Can't relate to that. Can't relate, but that's great for them. <laughs> you used cocoa butter. Yeah. Um, what brand? 
Oh, Palmer's. It's just Palmer's cocoa butter. Palmer's tried for and true. sure. Like I would go to Costco and get those really big jars in three. Yeah. And they'd be done in like a month. I was not playing. Like it yeah. went on every part of me and every crevice. <laughs> like I would peel parts and I'd be like, here you go. Like right. it was the whole thing. I was not playing when it came to cocoa butter. And did you have to change your skincare routine at all? Like were you previously using retinols or acids that you had to then? No ret. Yes, I was. You know what it is? Not to be... TMI. But my bikini line, mm. I was using like different acids and retinols trying to get it to be like the same color because I deal with ingrown hairs. And when I got pregnant, I had to stop using them. The doctor was like, the chemicals of this could potentially right. go into your body. And I was like, great. And then it, <laughs> and then it just went times 40. Yeah. And now it's back to being great. So mm, definitely yeah. weird. Things, things find a way of going back to the way they were or sometimes not. So now that you've given birth, do you feel like your body is different? It's definitely different. I'm much tinier. I lost a lot of weight. That's um, rare. Very rare. I had no appetite at all. So that's a part of it. And then you While know, you were pregnant. While I was pregnant and then definitely after I was pregnant. Like I had no, no cravings. Maybe a green apple here or there. Oh my gosh. And you're breastfeeding too? Yeah. And you weren't like starving? No. I just was like, mm, like the thought of it was making me feel gross. I know it was a really weird pregnancy. And then, you know, when you breastfeed, you lose like 200, 400 calories every single time. Right. And you're supposed to like triple your eating. That wasn't happening. So I'm tinier. It's not a bad thing. It's just not the body I was all into right before. Right. Like even right. today, I tried on these pair of jeans. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, honey, these are the jeans that like, we're like, you know, doing the doing the thing. And he's like, yeah, it'll, you know, now they barely fit. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's the Now they're hanging off of yeah, you. Yeah, falling off, but it's whatever. I was like, maybe I'll just buy some belts. Yeah, but, and also like get into weight training and like there's I so do. many. Okay. I want to get into all of it. Like I want to be like bodybuilder babe. Yes. I just, you know, having a newborn, your whole life is upside down. And I work, I never took time off. I was you didn't take maternity leave? No. I was in the hospital after I gave birth, responding to a partnership email about changing a caption. Like there was no Telsha time. It just Telsha, that's not go. good. I know. I just was like, let's just go. I just didn't have it in me to stop. I know there's a problem. I love to work. I love to work too. I can relate to that, but I definitely <laughs> took my maternity leave. But now that I'm self-employed, I wonder if I'll do the same, you know? Yeah. It's different when you work for a company where it you're is. just like, I'm going to be out for a, six months and you're exactly. going to pay me either way. Exactly. So I, I could just sit here and do nothing. But right. no, when you work for yourself and like the business also was shifting, uh, there was no yeah. time <laughs> to do anything but answer emails. What it's all right. Now, you have a young, young child, mm -hmm. but you always look really good. And I remember I was asking you about your hair and you're like, I like it straight, 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 straight. Like, I don't want to see a curl or a Not crinkle. A like crinkle. Even right now, this is irritating me, but that's okay. Your hair is literally bone straight right now. I don't <laughs> think that, it could be straighter. There are little pieces that just are not <laughs> <laughs> proper. So... What do you use to get your hair like super straight and sleek? And what's like your everyday go-to beauty look? Mm. My everyday go-to beauty look is the one I'm doing right now. Okay. I do like little dots of concealer. Which concealer do you use? Oh, YSL. Okay. And Chanel. Is it the Touche Clot? The, yeah, the okay. Touche Clot. And then I like take the little dabs of Chanel, which is like a darker shade than I am. And I go like under here. And then uh, YSL one that's lighter, obviously. So then I go... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. And then I just brush it. That's it. That's it. I forgot to do mascara this morning. And I've been on this new, like, which lip gloss is for me type of vibe. Okay. And now I'm here with Road. Oh. I'm loving it. The Road lip balm is really good. The pep <gasps> peptide lip treatment. Right? is amazing. I wanted to not like it. I wanted to hate it. <laughs> and it's funny because I got it in not the Not us being haters. I know. I'm such a hater. <laughs> okay. Yes. And which flavor do you like? There's like salted caramel. There's what's the, dar what's the darkest one? Like the chocolatey chocolatey one. I have it in my bag. When we get it so I can say it. Sure. Let's, gra let's grab it. Let's okay. do a little show and tell. Telsha and I also have the same exact bag, the Bottega Veneta Jody bag, which we both have stuffed to the brim with stuff. I probably have some baby books in the bottom of my bag too. Okay. <laughs> Does it say the espresso? Espresso. Nice. I'm obsessed. It's it's also like very addicting. I find that I'm like always reach for it and put it on multiple Dude, times. I, it's like she knew <laughs> yeah. that I was going to love this. And then I've really been into Summer Fridays. Yes, we love Summer Fridays. Didn't know my 
cousin is a wonderful makeup artist oh, cool. and she did my makeup on set the other day and she was like you need some <laughs> you need some lip gloss on those lips <laughs> they look jabbed and so i bought the lip butter balm and then yeah ysl too girly these might be the same color they are that is hilarious what's the color from ysl number 14 it doesn't have a name <laughs> just lip candy glaze number 14 lip candy glaze number 14 okay they are used once you have your good lip products, you just feel set. And I feel like you're very much a lip gloss girl. I am. It's so funny, too. When I was little, I used to hate my lips. Really? You have such beautiful lips. You know all the girls yeah. in L.A. pay for lips like this. I, they do. I used to hate them to the point where I would take pictures up until I got to college where I was covering my face like this. What? Mm-hmm. People made fun of my lips all the time. What they said? Oh, they're so full and luscious and beautifully shaped. Like no, what, they, was, what they, did they make? What they would to make say fun some of? Very vulgar. Oh, DSL. <laughs> yes, yes. Because I went to also I went to an all white private school for the first half of my high school, and then when I transferred over to public school when I was a junior in high school, they loved my lips, but I I was conditioned not to. So. Mm. It's interesting how those kind of all white environments Whoa. can alter your beauty standards to a degree where you start to dislike something that's actually like very coveted and beautiful. Right. That's the best part about you. I'm right. like, this is crazy. Right. I used to hate my lips. They make fun of my eyes. It was a whole thing. And then I was too chocolate. I remember <laughs> I dated this guy and we were supposed to go to like the middle school dance. And he said he couldn't take me because I was too chocolate. <gasps> I know. And from then, I'm like, I'm too chocolate. Was this a black? No, it was a white guy. A white guy said yeah, that? I know. It was crazy. I would try to hide from the sun. It was a whole thing. I played lacrosse. It was just like a whole thing. I know. Wow. And he made fun of my lips. Did you tell your therapist mom about this? You know, she probably learned from this podcast. I think I told her. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering, like, I'm wondering as a parent now, like as a mom now, yeah. if your child came to you. Oh, I'm running it up. Right. Like if Shepard said like, oh, I asked this girl to the dance, but she said she can't go with me. Because you're too chocolate? Oh, my God. <laughs> The school's on fire. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I feel that, though. That's a hard conversation. You know what's crazy? I was, like, laying with him the other day. And I was thinking, this is so beautiful, but I have to have so many conversations with you mm -hmm. about life. Yeah. That you, and that, race. Like, race. Like, and discrimination and violence. Slavery. All of it. I'm like, what is that? Like, how to move in this world? It's a whole thing. Yeah. Like, I was just going through that with Mavi where he was saying, okay, your dad is Turkish and we were playing Turkey. And I mm -hmm. said, and your mom's family is from Africa, but then they can't. And he was like, how did they come here? And I was like, uh, in chains? Like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't even know. know. Where should we begin? You're three years old. Like, I don't know how deep <laughs> we can go with this, but it's like, it starts at a very mm -hmm. young age. Mm -hmm. I was even thinking about the fact that, like, someone one day will probably call him the N-word. Most likely. Did it happen to you? Yeah. How old were you? I was in a grocery you? store. I actually was 24. <sighs> I know. I was in a grocery store, and there were all these, like, little checkout counters. In New York? Mm -hmm. And I was down in Lower East Side with one of my white friends, who's amazing. And I was walking past... And I think I maybe have brushed a woman by accident. Like, you know, your bag accidentally kind of braises someone. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. My apologies. I kept walking. Whatever you bleep. Wow. Oh, and I think I was a little tipsy, definitely in the day. So I turned around and it became a whole scream. Oh, match. you confronted her? Oh, for sure. See, I, I wouldn't play. have because I was I would be scared, but like I would have wanted to. No, I did. She was also an old woman, so like I kinda had it on her. Like if we really had to wrestle with us all, <laughs> I totally would have won. But yeah, definitely. And what did your white friend say? She started crying. I'm sure she was shocked. She was appalled. I'm like, girl, don't you live down the corner? This is what they be doing down here. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> But yeah, I've had a lot of like instances like that. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you're so young, black woman in the fashion space, which we know is very, oh very, God. still very white space. And then try owning a store. <laughs> and you own a store. So when you go to these appointments in Paris and you're like, hey, I'm like the head buyer, are they, are they kind of like looking around for like your yeah, boss? They're like, what is happening? Like, I was like, okay, hold on. And then they kind of bring over everyone on the team just to have a conversation to make sure I am who I am. I've even had someone look on my Instagram for proof, like, what are we doing? Wow. It's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. So what is it like when you experience racism in those moments? Do you have an example of experiencing racism on the job where you had to confront it? Like checking people out, mm -hmm. which I, like, you know, in New York City, you're in meatpacking. 
There are million dollar apartments across the way from me. I think people wanted to come in and like test how far they could take something. I've even had a woman <laughs> check out and you know, when you swipe, your name can pop up, like how you want to send a receipt. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, um, like how would you like me to send this re receipt? And she was like, well, I see you see my name is Karen, but I'm not a Karen. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Okay, like I wasn't even gonna go there. I was just trying to get you out of the door. Right. Like I don't understand, but that happens a lot. I think I look really young. I'm black. And you are I, really young. I mean, I am. Yes. And then I have this like you know peppy little. <laughs> I think I think people get really confused, but I don't play. I think in Europe when I was there, especially when like I was starting to do the buy, a lot of people were very confused how I could do it, why I was doing it how a black girl like me could own whatever it is she was owning. And it became a lot of conversation. And I think just in my confrontation was just also educating them on, you know, there are other wonderful black buyers out there. I'm not the first, like, you know, not the first one to be doing this, right. but I understand your question and I can answer it in an intelligent way, but also watch your mouth, don't offend me. So, right. you know. <laughs> well, I love shopping TA and I love that. You did a pop-up at Fred Siegel here, right? Yes, it was amazing. We were there for two months. Well, I hope you open an LA shop selfishly, but I love shopping online as well. I like online, but we'll see. I think LA buy like consumers are very specific. And I think it's to your point earlier where you said when they go out, they go from head to toe for like one night. Right. Whereas New York, that store works so well because we're always like, right. oh, let's buy this. Oh, for no reason at all. Right. Like, right. you know, that that's really happened here. I don't even shop that way here. I'm like, well, where are we going? Like, yeah. what's happening? So I'll buy it when I'm in New York City or I buy stuff online. I love that you had Epilogic at your store. The most beautiful packaging and also great skincare. What are your go-to skincare products? Okay. Epilogic's cleanser. Which one? The green or the pink? The pink. Love it. Love it. Eve Lom. Okay. People love Eve. Is it Eve Lom? Eve Lom? People it's love Eve it. Eve Lom. I Googled it before we got here. Just so I would say it right. <laughs> um, Eve Lom, I'm obsessed with. I actually used to be in PR and there, you know, the beauty team was next to the fashion team and the beauty girls would give us product to use. I was using it probably before I could afford it, but it's amazing it's really and cool. I'm obsessed. Yeah. Um, so I love them. Their cleanser is incredible. The oil out of this world. The hydration oil. Oh my God. I love a good Dove soap bar. I know that's like not what people say, but no, I feel like I read that in your Into the Gloss interview I'm from obsessed like obsessed with Dove. Yeah. Like throw it on. You were like, I take an eight minute shower and I mm -hmm. use a Dove soap bar. Yeah. And I use a Dove soap bar. That's some cleanser for me, blah, but that's I really know. it. <laughs> but I'm happy that you're talking about like the Dove soap bars, the Palmer's cocoa butter. Cause yeah. I think that there's this like weird assumption that those are just kind of things you use if you can't afford other stuff, right? But it's like you get sent lots of stuff. You have access yeah. to everything. Yeah. But like you still choose the classics yes. for a reason. Love it. Because they're great. Because they're great. And because they also aren't going anywhere. Yeah. You know? Like you could also grab it anywhere you want to. CVS, Walgreens, Dwayne Reed, whatever. Right. I can go grab it. So oh my God, I have to wash my face. Uh, right. Like grab it, be done. So that's great. I can't let, let you leave without talking about your wedding look because it's probably, I'm sure it's like one of the most like pinned weddings on Pinterest. It is. I see myself on Pinterest all the time. Like, oh my God, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> you and Justin both looked so phenomenal. Yes. And your wet, that designer that you are, she's become very popular now. Yes, she has. Daniel Frankel, I'm obsessed. Yeah, it's, it's Danielle Frank Frankel. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, your, how did you conceptualize your wedding look? And how did you also think about the beauty moment? Because I feel like the dress really... Yeah, but the hair and the... The moment. hair, everything was just perfect. So how did you conceptualize really your... Spinning. Like, did you feel like, okay, I want to be this... Like, some people are like, I want to be a classic bride. I want to be a cool yeah, bride. Yeah, I wanted I wanna to be, be a cool modern bride. Okay. I'd seen it done already. Yeah. As far as, like, the classic brides or traditionals. And it, it's beautiful. Do not get me wrong. But it just didn't speak to, like, who I am and my personality. And I saw on Instagram, like... <laughs> years before my wedding in 2019 she was a part of like the cfda and she did this dress which was the dress i wore but it had like black kind of tooling and then it had like a fabric mm -hmm. and i remember i went to the appointment and i was like were you even engaged at this point no no not okay at all. i which... didn't even know justin <laughs> i just saw it and screenshotted it ladies it was... take this <laughs> don't wait until you're engaged to begin no! shopping for your wedding dress you can just if That's, you find something that speaks to you, yeah. just like store it in your store mental in your memory bank. Yes, so okay. I, I went to the appointment. It was the first one I ever did. I was like, they, you know, they let me try on a couple of dresses. And I'm like, hey, like these are cute. But I know which one I want. I'm going to wait to ask my mom 
Tasha, say what you want. I'm like, <laughs> okay. So I was like, oh, I have this like old screenshot from 2019. I know it's from the CFTA. Uh, I think I would fit it. Do you have us in the back? They're like, actually, we have the full dress and satin. You'd be the first one to wear it. Do you want to try it on? I'm wow. like, what? And they rolled it out. It was like a Princess Diaries moment. And that was your first try on and you found it in that moment. And it was yep. the same one you wanted from years ago. Yep. Tried it on. And my mom was like, so we'll take it. I'm like, okay, we'll take it. What she said, we're taking it. And it was so amazing. I love that. And how'd you decide to do your hair and makeup? The hair was hard. Well, let me go with the makeup. The makeup was easy. I like just a cute, natural look. I don't like a lot of eye. Uh, I don't like like lip liner, eyeliner. Like I want to look like myself. <laughs> Just normal. So I just kind of went with a simple look. I looked up like Yara Shadidi. Yeah. A lot of like what she's done, I'm obsessed with. Like it's always like cute cheeks and like a really cute lip. Mm -hmm. And then everything else is very soft. So I went with that. And then for my hair, oh my God, that was so hard. I debated on down or up, extensions oh, yeah, or not. Thing, yeah. <laughs> and then my sister. Veil. Like, because, right? It's like yeah. everything works together. Exactly. Right? And then my sister was like, isn't the dress the moment? Just let the dress be the moment. Yeah. And I'm like, huh, you're right. And so I ended up finding this like random Pinterest photo from some woman that was on some red carpet. And she had her hair kind of like some up top, some up down. And then she like wrapped a ribbon around it. And so I had Daniel Franco find me fabric that basically was from my dress when they altered it. And I wrapped it around my hair. So cute. It was Thanks. such a moment. Such an iconic Thank bridal you. look thank you i'm obsessed i would i was wearing it the other day your dress yeah oh my goodness <laughs> now did you have i know you said you went straight back into work but did you have those periods of just feeling incredibly ugly after you gave birth because i had like a good like three months of like did i i'm ugly every day hell yeah i cried <laughs> my god there are photos of me that won't even see the light of day like photos of me a shepherd i'm like no one will ever <laughs> see this yeah i felt ugly i felt just unlike myself right i didn't have like a, a ton of confidence mm -hmm. it's still slowly coming back mm -hmm. i I didn't feel like well, nothing fit. And then the even, sleep deprivation also, I feel like, really messes with your mental. Listen, I was Delulu. Like, yeah. I was like, what's happening? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of like in a fog. Yeah, you're in like a full fog. And I just, just like I said, crying all the time. I st I'm still trying to get back to like, okay, Telsha, like, get your life. But it's also like, you know, trying to figure out, okay, how do I love myself in this moment, even if I don't feel like my best self? Mm -hmm. And that's been really hard. And I've never had to do that before. So it was definitely different having to do it, you know, when you just gave birth. And then also as you're doing that, loving and feeding and literally also feeding a whole new human. I was like, oh my God, this is like the hardest thing I think I've ever done. Yes. After like 10 months of breastfeeding, I was very much ready to get my body back. Listen, it's been four and I'm like, this is it. <laughs> okay <laughs> like what's yeah. happening which also is like no one ever wants to talk about that like i think i was getting my nails done and my nail tech was like she goes girl I only breastfeed for one month i can barely do it like i wanted my body back and i was like i was like i feel you because when you become a mom it's almost like you're not allowed to be selfish at all so true. You're expected to be this like selfless like yeah. It's like this is but like even Wonder Woman was selfish. I don't understand like why I have to be the one to kind of like let everything go. Right. And there's some things that have been very easy to transition to and I think the body part like I remember I was like how are you doing? And I'm like I just want my body back. That's yeah. all I want. I want it to be mine again. I'm happy to share my time, share my space, share my mental Share my closet, share my house, but I want my body back. And my money. <laughs> and my money. <laughs> like, and my time, yeah. All of it. Here you go. But like my body, I would like her because right. I've worked this hard to, to get her where. How has breastfeeding been? For some people, it comes super easily. Okay, so like it came easy. Now it's not. So mm. as soon as he came out, our first night together, I was like, okay, honey, mm. like try to latch. And he's like, wow. And he got it immediately was soft was kind yeah but lately <laughs> it hasn't been easy at all more so on his part and on my part mm -hmm. like we do incorporate bottles so that whole like nipple confusion is a thing he likes a bottle because he gets to hold it to like his like you know angle of which he mm -hmm. likes he doesn't have to go to both boobs so there's no like stopping and then going mm -hmm. he just is like ready to go so it's been nice because that means that other people get to be involved 
in the process. Like my husband gets to feed him, my mom gets to feed him with the bottle, but it's been very difficult. I'm trying to figure out how much longer we have on this journey, but I'm here for him, so. I will serve until I'm told not to. And I think you're really good at putting together looks that convey confidence. Like you were saying, you're kind of slowly getting back mm -hmm. into it. I remember seeing you in those like super high heels, yes. like right after giving birth. You were at some <laughs> event looking fabulous. Thanks. I'd love to hear from you different like outfit recipes almost that you Ooh. feel like really kind of like pack a punch. Because I find that I mean, there was something where people are saying like, okay, there's like little top, big pants or like oh. oversized jacket, small dress, like little okay. like outfit recipes that like you know are like always gonna hit they can be like your recipes or mm -hmm. recipes for other people mm -hmm. okay i live for a good black pant i'm okay. wearing one right now we love a black pant. i have all different types okay i have like the high-waisted slim fits this is also bottega from the outlet. okay i have some bottega veneta pants from an outlet as well <laughs> sawgrass and boca raton we yes. love but i have to get mine altered oh <gasps> Because that's the other thing when you shop at outlets. Oh, Sometimes yeah, they don't have sure. your size. So no. you're just like, okay, it's a great price. I'm going to buy yeah. it. Okay. But Bottega no, makes great pants. These are the sisterhood pants. of the traveling pants. Okay? Yes. They fit me as soon as I tried them on. And I was like, ooh, mama, you look good. <laughs> okay. So a black pants, I have like crop ones, wide ones, slim ones, thick ones, like ones that are really heavy, baggy ones, guy ones, girl ones, all types. Okay. A black pant. Black pant. Have to have it. A good black bag. Let's see. But what are my recipes? Yeah, look, okay. what do you pair with? So you put on the black pant. What do you? What's what's going on? If top? I'm wearing a wide black pant, then I'm doing a baby tee. Okay. Which is usually vintage. Okay. Probably an extra small. Where do you source your vintage baby tees? Ooh, from this place called Drugstore ATL okay. on Instagram. Okay. And then also to Justin's Closet, <laughs> and then also from this place called Vantage in Utah. Okay. Black pant, vintage baby tee. What's the shoe moment? The shoe moment's probably a slide. Okay. Probably from the wavy or J.W. Anderson or um, Birkenstocks, but like probably collab. Like I have the Rick Burks. Yeah. But we can't do the basic Burks. Can't like do the Rick Owens oh, no. Birkenstocks. <laughs> okay. Like a whole thing. The ones that kind of sparkle. Like I said, a bag. And then I'll probably do like a sweater, like an oversized sweater. Okay. Sweater like tied over the shoulder or like? It can be one that you can tie over the shoulder, tie cross. Tie, I love a tie cross. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. And that, actually I did this look the other day and I wore like the Christopher John Rogers like sparkly two in one sweater and it kind of oh, likes yes. rainbow and then it's black. I, I, I wore that into the ground this summer. I wore it like 50 times. I wore it to Beyonce. I <laughs> love that. I don't think I'm like that with your sweater from. What's like a sexy night out? outfit probably what i'm wearing right now but not a sweater so i'll just have like a a tee on my boobs would be i kind of tie the top in the back so i can make it really tight yeah. you know and then pants and some heels or i used to do like an oversized tee and just a really nice heel like okay. from attica and then i would have like a mini bag and then i would usually put my hair in a bun like Cute. to the top and then just do like a lot of lip gloss. <laughs> yes. And like, are you a dresses? I'm trying to think like, have I seen you? I mean, obviously your wedding dress, but like dresses and skirts, is that? I have them. I don't always go to them, but yeah. I do have them. Like I have this amazing flower dress from Rosie Asulin. Oh, I love Rosie. Me too. And it was at the store, but I have that and I wear it. It's amazing. I wear it like in the summer with just like a flip flop. So cute. Colorful flip flop and like a little white mini bag or I don't wear a bag and I just put all my stuff in my pockets and then just kind of like walk around like that. Mm -hmm. It's really cute. Well, we're all going to shop TA Come. now. What's the, what's the URL so people can start shopping? www.shop-ta.com shop-ta.com Now, what are some other black retailers? Because I just feel like if I'm going to spend my money, I would love to shop with, okay. there's no black owned designer outlet store. <laughs> there is not. I'm so sorry for everyone. <laughs> but, but, you know, who are other people in this space that are offering like really beautiful items, mm -hmm. interesting items? Mm -hmm. Sherry McMullen. Yes. They're in Chicago, right? No, they're in Oakland. Oh, they're in Morning. Oakland. Okay. But I think she did a pop-up in Chicago. Okay. Or Detroit. And then Sincerely Tommy, which is in Brooklyn. And there aren't a lot of black women in this space. <laughs> like there if aren't. I'm as my brain, I'm like, that might be the list. <laughs> There's also such a like white space in the market for black owned like children's wear, children's clothing, children's retailers. Where is everyone at? Like there's such a gap. There, there are black it? people having children, I would imagine. All the time. Who love to spend money. Oh, and especially when, on clothes. Oh my gosh. I mean, when I walk into like Gucci and I see like the baby, I'm like, 
But people buy, people buy will it. spend $500. I'll do it. I won't, but they'll do it. On like a coat for mm-hmm. a six month old. Mm-hmm. And they're going to grow out of it in like two days. I know. I was anti like fashion, fashion baby, but I love it now. Right, because they grow out of it. Banana Republic baby. Oh, is that a thing? Oh my God. It's insane. The cashmere sets, Shepard has like four. Wow. For like 70 bucks, which is still a lot, but like, you know, 70 bucks. Yeah. 80 bucks. Like, sure, why not? Are there beauty moments that you hope to have with your son as he gets older? Yeah. I'm excited to like comb his hair and <laughs> I need to learn how to braid, but I'm excited to comb his hair and like. I feel like, like your husband braids moments. hair. He doesn't. He gets his hair braided. Oh, okay, okay. So, he gets it braided, okay. Yeah, he goes to a salon. Um, dropping them off at a salon to do that would be cute. I'm excited to teach him how to, like, moisturize. Yeah. I'm big on, like, I douse him in Aquaphor, like, oh, yes. all over his body and face. Or Palmer's. Or coconut oil. Or just regular oil. Were you like me in that you wanted to have a girl when you found out you were pregnant? Yeah, yeah. I really thought... <laughs> I told somebody, I didn't think I, t- I screenshot it too. I was like, oh my God, I have divine feminine ovaries. Like a girl's coming out of here. Like yeah. she's going to be the best. Like we're done after this. Right. Like what? And then um, we were in Paris and it was New Year's night and I got the little dingling from my doctor and it said <laughs> DNA consistent with male. And, and you were like. Did you have gender disappointment? For like 10 seconds. Yeah. And then I saw Justin's big oh. smile and I was like. He was excited. Oh my God, this is totally worth it. But now that I had a boy, I'm like, oh, I'm a boy mom for sure. Yes. I was going like, to say being a boy mom is great. Is the best. You don't know until it happens, but it's yeah. so great when it does. I'm like, this is like, this is what God wanted for me for sure. Like yeah. just hanging out with him, looking at it. Like he just, his eyes just stare at me. There's just so much love in him. Yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm so happy I had a boy. He's just cute. He like, he's learning how to take my face and uh, like kiss me. Oh. And he'll like get really close and he'll just stare at me and then he'll smile. I'm like, you want to kiss? And he'll be like, mm-hmm. And I'll give him a kiss and he starts laughing. Live for those moments. Me too. They're the best. You have such a light energy about you. Like if I met, if I was just seated next to you at a dinner party and I didn't know yeah. anything about what you did. And then at the end you were like, oh, I'm like a yoga teacher or like a painter. I'd be like, oh, that's such a sweet, like cool, you know, like, but you're this like powerhouse Thanks. who has her own shop and is like going around the world doing all these fashion things, doing all these collaborations. Like you're like a real like business woman, like entrepreneur, like <laughs> I know you're making tough decisions. Yeah. I know you're like on people. Like all I know all the things you have to do to get to this level of success yeah. at your age. You're also yeah. a mom. You're also a wife. But you you, you seem so like, I guess, unstressed, un, unfettered mm-hmm. by all of the yeah. responsibility you have. How are you able to get to this place? My relationship with Christ. I'm like very deep in my word and very... I guess religious, spiritual, whatever people want to say. But my faith is what like drives me. And I guess just the idea that like no matter what I have going on, I'm always covered. I think is why mm-hmm. I'm able to be so light and just so happy all the time. Because I know like I'm here for a purpose. And yes, I have all this wonderful success, but I'm still not even where I want to be right now. So it's nice just knowing that. I'm covered in that way and I'm guided in all my decisions. And at the end of the day, I just do my best. And I don't always show up, you know, like this all the time, but it's nice, you know, 90% of the time I do. So (laughs) it's nice this way. Do you pray every day? I pray every day. Me and my son do our prayers when we wake up. My husband and I pray. So it's just, you know, we just vibe that way. Yeah. We just vibe in Christ. It's a nice thing. I remember Justin saying that he prayed for like a wife like you before he even met me. Met yeah. you. I know. I was like, honey, you pray for me. It's funny though, because I didn't even like the idea of like husband and kid didn't really click until Justin. Hmm. Before it was like career, career, career. Like you have to be doing this. You, you're you behind. I think I told you once I felt like a like 40 year old woman in my head. Right. But even though I'm not. But then I met him. And I was like, okay, like, God, is this what you want for me? And then I said a prayer. But that did come right after I told my sister, I'm done being a girlfriend. I'm a wife. Somebody (laughs) needs to figure it out. (laughs) How old were you when you had this revelation? 26. Okay. And then I met Justin, what, like 27? Wow. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I know. I think, like, once you decide, Will Smith um, has this, like, 
what's it called interview where he's talking to someone about something and he essentially says like once you decide something like the universe will find its way to basically give it to you especially if you're listening and that for me is rings true that is so true yeah and when do you feel most beautiful when my son's looking at me or when my husband comes to give me a kiss but before them I probably would say when I'm like dressed up when I'm dressed to the nine I'm going to an event and I love my look that's what I feel most beautiful. I love yeah. that. Well, it's been such a pleasure talking with you Thanks and hearing your beauty me. story. This was Thank so you. great. No, this is amazing. I appreciate you. We've got to get the boys together. We need to do a play date very soon. I want to do a pizza date. Oh, my gosh. Pizzas? I know. Oh, my God. I'm hungry again. I know. Jess is like, it's midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I tell Umud, I'm like, you've got to just open a pizza restaurant oh my at this God, point. I, I would be, I'd be there every I week. I know. Well, we'll get together soon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.